As you look out over the expanse of sawgrass and mudflats that make up the salt marshes of New Jersey, you would never guess that they are among the most unique and biodiverse ecosystems in the country. It is only once you step out into the mud and murky water that the fascinating denizens of this habitat will show themselves, and it is our goal to introduce you to as many of these amazing invertebrates as we can. In our last episode from the Salt Marsh, we featured many of the bizarre and overlooked species that inhabit this wild place, and in today's episode, we would like to highlight some more of the crustaceans that make their living out here. You may recognize some of these species, and some you may never have seen before. So if you're ready, let's hop into the marsh and meet some truly incredible crabs. So this little guy here is the Jonah crab, a very common species of crab here in New Jersey. Now this is a species we've seen in the salt marsh for many years, but never actually gotten our hands on. So in a way, this is actually a lifer for us. And though he may look a little bit limp, you can see his jelly pads are just kind of hanging down there. This is a fully live individual, and you can see every now and then he's going to be bubbling a little bit around his mouth. That's just to keep oxygen flowing through his gills. And actually, as a matter of fact, I'm going to dip this guy into the water real quick just to make sure that he has plenty of oxygen. Now, the Jonah crab is a very widespread species and can be found right down the east coast of the United States from Newfoundland all the way down to Florida. During the fall and winter months, these guys actually head deeper into the Atlantic Ocean up to depths of 750 meters, and that's where they're going to spend the fall and winter. Now, in the spring and summer, like it is now, they move further inshore to breed, so we probably caught this guy right at the beginning of their migration. Now, this is an omnivorous species, and they'll eat everything from small fish and other invertebrates to algae as well. So they have a very diverse diet, and take a look at how pretty this crab is. He has a beautiful speckled pink coloration to the top of his carapace here, and a very iconic scalloped design right to the front of his carapace, which allowed us to easily identify this species. Now, we don't want to keep him out of the water too, too long, so I think we're going to let him go now and see what else is out here. As we poked among the rocky tidal zones of the marsh ecosystem, we came across one surprising and unexpected find, a crab species from the other side of the world. This is the Asian shore crab, originally found throughout East Asia along the coasts of China, Japan, and parts of Southeast Asia. These guys have been introduced to Europe and North America, where they have become an abundant invasive species. They were brought over in the hulls of cargo ships, and may have first been released from seafood shipments coming into New Jersey. Asian shore crab females can reproduce between three and four times per year, and lay over 50,000 eggs in each clutch. Because of this, their numbers have skyrocketed in their invasive range, and they've begun to outcompete native crab species, putting a lot of strain on the ecosystem. Luckily, many native fish species readily feed on the Asian shore crab, which is helping to rebalance the natural food web. What you got, bro? So this is the Atlantic blue crab, a little bit tricky to wrangle here, but finally got a hold of one of these guys, and you can see how big this is. This is definitely one of the larger crab species that we've found. So let's take a look at this guy more up close. All right. Now this is the Atlantic blue crab, or the blue swimmer crab as they're otherwise known, and it is not hard to see where they get that name from if you take a look at their jelly pets there. They have that beautiful blue color that is absolutely distinct and makes it easy to identify this crab species. Now they're incredibly widespread, found along the Atlantic coast of the Americas, America, so that's north, central, and south, as far south as Argentina, in fact. So they're a very common species to see, and they're found primarily in coastal, intertidal, and oceanic habitats. So an area like the salt marsh where we found this little guy is pretty common habitat for the Atlantic blue crab. You can see he's kind of bubbling around his mouth there. That's just to keep oxygen flowing through his gills, and uh, we're also going to dip him in the water every now and then, as I'm going to do right now, just to make sure that he is still breathing. Now, these guys can breathe air, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes. So this is not harming him in any way. We just wanted to get a brief presentation before we let him back into the environment. 
Now this is a fairly large crab species, they'll get about 23 centimeters at full length, so this guy's about mid-range, they will certainly get a bit bigger than this. And Atlantic blue crabs are what's called opportunistic omnivores, so they'll eat just about anything that they can find out here, things like carrion, small fish, as well as algae and plankton, basically anything that they can get into their mouths. What's interesting about the Atlantic blue crab is that their conservation status is actually not known. They face a lot of threats from humans, including habitat destruction and over-harvesting, and because of that, it's difficult for scientists to estimate just how many of them there are. So what's important is if you are going to eat blue crabs, they are common in the commercial fishing industry, you make sure that it's done sustainably, getting from places that aren't harvesting them in extremely large numbers, and only going from places that use them sustainably. Alright guys, so we're gonna get this Atlantic blue crab back into the environment, what a way to cap off this invertebrate adventure here in the salt marsh. All right, buddy. So we'll see you later. It's been an incredible couple days here in the salt marsh filming all of the invertebrates that we can find. We've seen blue crabs, horseshoe crabs even, all kinds of stuff, and we couldn't have asked for a better trip down here in southern New Jersey. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave a like on it and comment down below which of the invertebrates we featured was the most interesting to you. And be sure to subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers now because we have a ton of content coming from all over the map that you guys will definitely not want to miss. So we will see you guys in the next episode. Episode.